Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I'm coming back again with another video. And I was actually thinking about R. Kelly's bail appeal. And I found myself asking, was his bail appeal a mistake? And then you look at the fact that not only did he appeal in New York, but then he followed through with several other motions for bail in Chicago. And I'm asking myself, was it, was it a mistake? Was his appeal for bail and the repeated attempts of bail in Chicago a mistake? And some people will probably just think I'm being negative. And I always try to prevent from being negative, but I think sometimes you, you really have to be true to yourself and you have to you know look at some of the things that you're doing because whether you win or lose or whether you prevail or you succeed or not, a lot of times you can always get something out of it, right? You know, just because you have a temporary defeat or momentary loss, it's only temporary and it's only a, a, a momentary loss if you choose to get what is called the seed of equivalent benefit. Every failure, every defeat in this world, so I'm told, and I believe it, every failure, every, de every defeat has a benefit. And if you glean that benefit, then you've basically transmuted, you, you're basically turning lead into gold, right? You know, a little alchemy for you there, right? So you, you're, you're uh, observing failures gives you the opportunity to turn lead into gold. And that's if you guys think it, his appeals were actually failures. <clears throat> I'll say this, and you know what, before I go too deep, let me just go ahead and read the order in Chicago. And this order was given, you know, sometime back, I think it was like uh, on the 19th or something like that, or a couple of days ago. It's, it's old, it's, it's not something new. Let me see if I can just scroll down to see a date on this. Yeah, so it was given a couple of days ago. Today is October 22nd. This was given on the 19th. So let's 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 go ahead and read this. So this is in the United States uh, District Court for the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division, United States of America, who is the plaintiff, the prosecutors versus uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly, right? And then also in this case is Daryl McDavid and Milton Brown, so on, uh, or June Brown, right? So order. For the reasons stated herein, the court denies defendant Robert Sylvester Kelly's motion to reconsider bail, and then it goes, and motion for evidentiary hearing. And then it goes, a motion to reconsider bail. Mr. Kelly moves this court to reconsider his bail determination for the third time. Right. You know, so this is one of the things I'm talking about. And this is the point I'm going to get to at the end. This is the third time in, in Chicago. But as you guys know, there's been multiple times in New York as well. Right. <clears throat> so the Bail Reform Act permits a district court to order pretrial detention if it will if it concludes that no condition or combination of conditions will reasonably assure the appearance of the person as required and the safety of any other person and the community, 18 U.S.C. 3142 E1. Everyone knows what that is. I've, I have multiple videos covering this topic. And then it goes on to say, in making this determination, the court must consider the following factors. One, the nature and circumstances of the offense charge. Two, the weight of the evidence against the defendant. Three, the history and the characteristics of the person. And four, the nature and seriousness of the danger to any person or the community that would be posed by the defense release, 3142G. And again, 3142G is the bail statute, is part of the bail statute. Whereas here a defendant is charged with qualifying crimes involving a minor, there is a uh, rebuttal presumption of pretrial detention and then it goes on, the defendant bears a limited burden of production to present evidence that he will not flee or endanger the community if released. United States versus Porter. Even if the defendant rebuts it, the presumption remains 
in the case as an evidentiary finding militate militating i don't even know what that word means i guess that uh i think they tried to type mitigating right so the, pres the presumption remains in the case of a, as an evidentiary finding, uh, mitigating or uh, militating against his release, untimely, right? Let me just read that again, because it's a uh, militating uh, word really threw me off. Actually, let me see if I can switch. Let me see if I can get the definition of militating real fast. Be right back. All right, so militate, <laughs> a fact or circumstance being a powerful or conclusive factor in preventing. Hmm. Interesting word. Never seen that word before in my life. You learn something new every day. Uh, anyway, let's just continue on. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and read this again. Even if the defendant rebuts it, the presumption remains in the case as an evidentiary finding militating against his release. Ultimately, the government retains the burden of persuasion by clear and convincing evidence that the defendant is dangerous and preponderance of evidence that the defendant is a flight risk, right? You know, so I interpret this to mean that R. Kelly has a small job to do when convincing the court that he should be released and the government has a big job where they have to really put a lot of effort into proving uh, by the preponderance of evidence that he should be locked up and that uh, until uh, the trial is had and until there's a decision, right? So Mr. Kelly argues that the court incorrectly applied the Bail Reform Act and the facts do not warrant his pretrial detention. And previously denying Mr. Kelly's bail, the court concluded that there is no condition or combination of conditions that would reasonably assure Mr. Kelly's appearance and safety of the community. In doing so, the court considers the factors set forth in 18 U.S.C. 3142G, we just read those, as applied to Mr. Kelly. Ultimately, it found that the weight of the factors favored detention. Consistent with the Eastern District of New York findings in this Trice denying Mr. Kelly's, oh, actually, so they talk about New York. And the Second Circuit's affirmance of the of denial, the court found that Mr. Kelly possesses a significant flight risk and a danger to the community. Bank records produced since, bank records produced since then show that Mr. Kelly has the means to flee, considering the multiple charges and the severe penalties at stake, Mr. Kelly also has the motive to flee. The risk of witness tampering and obstruction of justice are high, particularly as they relate to the missing videos mentioned in the superseding indictment and the grand jury's finding that the witness were paid and threatened to charge testimony or not to appear. Particularly as they relate to the missing videos mentioned in the superseding indictment, and the grand jury's finding that the witness were paid and threatened to change testimony or not to appear. For these reasons, the court found that the electronic monitoring and home confinement conditions would be sufficient. For these reasons, the court found that the electronic monitoring and home confinement conditions would be insufficient. Mr. Kelly has not demonstrated a change in circumstances that would alter the court's previous conclusion that pre-child detention is necessary. Further, even if the court were inclined to grant the motion, Mr. Kelly remains subject to a pre-trial detention order from the Eastern District of New York that was recently affirmed by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Mr. Kelly's pretrial detention is not indefinite. Indeed, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Brown recently agreed to the government's proposal to set a trial date and the next status conference on December 16th. So December 16th, we should have trial dates. While McDavid objected alone, Mr. Kelly will go to trial as soon as it is safe and practicable. Until then, he will remain in detention. Then it goes on to talk about the evidentiary hearing. 
Mr. Kelly also moves for either immediate release or an evidentiary hearing to investigate a recent incident with a former fellow inmate at the Metropolitan Correction Center. Kelly asserts that the inmate physically assaulted him and that uh, MCC personnel, among other things, failed to intervene in a timely manner. Mr. Kelly does not cite nor can the court find any cases to support his contentions. While the incident is concerning, it does not warrant immediate release, nor is it, a, is it material to the court's detention determination under the Bail Reform Act. This single isolated incident does not suggest that the Bureau of Prisons is incapable of safely housing Mr. Kelly. The inmate involved in the incident with Mr. Kelly has since been transferred to a different facility. In any event, release from custody is not the appropriate remedy for such a wrong. If Mr. Kelly wishes to challenge the conditions of his confinement or the MCC's ability to protect him, he can bring those claims in a separate civil action following proper exhaustion of remedies. Accordingly, the court denies Mr. Kelly's motion to reconsider bail and a motion for evidentiary hearing. So let me go ahead and get into this. Let me go ahead and get into this. So now, as you, as you just heard me read, he was already denied bail three times in New York, and then he was also denied bail several times in Chicago. And again, I'm not trying to be negative. Definitely not, not trying to be negative. I don't want y'all to come and start beating me up and say, oh, you being too negative, say something positive, get some positive videos. What you need to understand that sometimes you have to, and if you're not doing this in your life personally, you, you're not living your right, life right. Sometimes life requires us to take inventory. Sometimes we have to take a minute to think about the things we've done and what we can get out of the things we've done. Even though that there appears to be a failure on surface, we, we sometimes have to go back and we have to look and see if that failure came with a benefit. And 90%, I'm just going to say, I believe 99% of all failures come with a benefit. And in my opinion, the bail hearings are over. There's no more. The bail hearings were over way before they even had the appeal. That's my own personal opinion. And I say that for several reasons, but the way that Judge uh, Ann Don Con Connolly or Donnelly, whatever her name is, the way she wrote it, the way she wrote the order, to me, it just seemed like there was just no getting around it, right? And then when he filed a motion for reconsideration, she came back with, with an even stronger order. So you can tell from the order that she was pretty adamant that the she wasn't going to allow her to get out on bail. Now, here's the thing. Anytime you appeal, you really want to have something really solid. First, I don't even like the way they did the appeal. If I was to appeal, I would have did an appeal de novo, which means you want the appeals court to take a fresh look. To me, when they appeal, it seems like that appeal was really just limited to the issues that uh, the very specific issues that they raise in, in, in the trial. But when you do a appeal de novo, that means you want the, the appeals court to look at all the, all, all the filings in this case. You want the appeals court to look at every little detail as, it, as if it was fresh from the first time around, right? Like you want them to take a fresh look at everything. That's why when you ever do appeal, some people choose de novo. Now, if you want the appeal to be narrow and you only want to focus on some specific issues, then you can, you know, uh, appeal based on an error of the judge, right? You can say the judge made an error on this specific thing. I want them to look at this specific error that, you know, they made. That's my understanding. Of course, I'm not a, no I'm not a lawyer, but you guys know that already. So uh, if you have a difference of opinion, go ahead, 
you know, hit up the um, comments below and let us know what you think about the appeals process and how it works. So I don't even like the way it was appealed because to me, it didn't seem like it was a, a de novo appeal. And to me, it just seems like a de novo appeal is a little bit better because the judge can look at everything and if she finds, if they find any errors, then they can grant you an appeal on an error that you didn't even, even raise, right? You know, for example, if there are serious constitutional violations, then they can grant you relief based on that, even though you didn't ask for it, right? So that's that's the way I would have did it. I would I would have went de novo. I would have appealed. I would have appealed de novo, but he didn't do that, right? So I think the appeal was a long shot to begin with, and I never. I don't think I would have put energy, time, and energy into an appeal. Now, in R. Kelly's situation, I don't know how much money he has. I don't think anybody knows how much money he has. But we're, we're looking at a situation where time is a factor, money may be a factor, and the other factor is his image, right? You know, the more he goes into court and the more he loses these motions and filings, the 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 worse it looks for him in terms of whether or not he's a winner, right? So that's the perception in the courtroom and even outside the courtroom. When it's, it's kind of like you watching a boxing match and you see a guy constantly getting jabbed and constantly getting hit and his opponent isn't getting hit at all. Your perception is is like, damn, you know, this motherfucker his ass beat. You know, you know, put your hands up, fight back, you know. That's going to be your perception is that, you know, that the guy is losing, right? And that's probably the perception that a lot of people have in this R. Kelly case as it pertains to R. Kelly. And I've even seen people post stuff like that. They're, they're, they're saying that, uh, you know, he hasn't won. I'm not even going to say who it was, but I think I saw someone say he hasn't won a motion yet, right? I mean, and it's true. He hasn't won a motion yet, but it doesn't mean he can't win his case. But... It's, it's just one of the aspects of what's of this case is perception, then you have time, and then elements. Let's say elements. So one element is the perception of whether or not you're winning or losing. Another element is time, and then another element is money, right? So looking at the appeal, I think the appeal tapped all those different elements, right? It made R. Kelly, R. Kelly look like he's losing because he lost all those motions and the appeal. Then it wasn't a good use of time, in my opinion, right? I think it, it, in some situations, depending on what it is, if you have money, you can buy time. What do I mean by that? So if you have enough money, and you have several things that you want to get done, you can hire people to go and focus on all those things that you need done and get them done in a quicker amount of time, right? You know, so that's what I mean uh, when I say that. I, I guess there, there what I'm are trying to say situations that. where it doesn't matter how many people you pay to, to work on something, only one person or, or one or two people can work on it at one, even, one given time. So throwing more people and money at the problem is just going to be a waste, right? So I don't know that it was a good use of his time because even though he may or may not have the money, it's still not a good use of time because he could have paid those people to do something else. And I think that the best way to use his time would have not been to pursue this motion because it's already clear based on the fact that you were denied in New York it's and you were denied in Chicago a couple of times, it's clear that they're not letting you out on bail. While I don't really believe any of the reasons why they're keeping you behind bars is true because, I mean, you were obviously out on bail in the state case and you were doing just fine with the state case but now they want to trump up all these other charges and now they lock you down. I think I think the thing that's that's really hurting him is the allegation 
that he paid off the witness in the state case. So they're probably saying, nah, we're not going to risk it. We're just going to go ahead and lock him up. And that way we don't have to worry about the witness being tampered with. And then on top of that, they were able to get the three other people indicted with the allegations that he tried to pay, you know, Azrael Clary. So that that's kind of what's really hurting him. And I just think that because of that, constantly applying for bail, appealing to bail is not the best investment of time. Is not It wasn't the best investment of money. And the fact that, you know, he's continued to lose these things, it's making him look like a loser. Not, and, and I'm choosing my words carefully. I'm not saying it makes him look guilty. I'm saying it makes him look like a loser. And again, I give you the analogy where you see two guys in the ring boxing and one guy's constantly being hit in the face and the other guy hasn't been touched yet because that is basically what's happened is that R. Kelly is constantly losing these motions and he hasn't really won any motion against the government, right? You know, so it, it, it's pretty much a good analogy. The, 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 the government is constantly decking R. Kelly in the face, but yet the government has yet to get, you know, hit in the nose, hit in the face. They don't have any blood on their face or anything like that. So it, it, it makes it look like the government is winning and R. Kelly is losing. That's the unfortunate thing about this. So, yeah, so to me, it was a waste. It was a bad move. That's my personal opinion. It was a bad move. If you think different, then definitely leave your questions and comments below and let me know why you think different. But I think now that we kind of got that out the way, we can kind of use this and learn from it and basically try to turn things around. We can use this, learn from it, and try to turn things around. So what can R. Kelly do? So what, in my opinion, what should R. Kelly do now? Well, first, let's deal with perception. Let's deal with perception. First, I think R. Kelly needs to start filing some simple, basic motions that, that can't be denied, right? And then when those motions are granted, you want to toot them out on Twitter, so on and so forth, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't think of any particular motion to file uh, that he can win on, but uh, you know, there's always tons of motions that you can file that you can easily win on, right? And it's, it's kind of like asking a person yes questions just so that you can just kind of put them in a mindset of complying with you and basically, uh, you know, granting your wishes or trying to use it as a negotiation tool, right? You know, so that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. So beyond filing motions, simple motions that he can win, he also has to start dealing with this this time issue, right? The timing of it all. Well, he actually has to start considering the time factor. Now, with respect to time, he probably should decide whether or not he wants to draw this case out or whether he wants to go to court quickly. Because I think he has the ability to go to court quickly if he wants to. And he has the ability to draw this case out. Uh, the reason he has the ability to draw this case out is because Corbin 19 is here. And we're slowly but surely getting through it. But it's going to be a while before the federal court system is fully functional. He could use that to his advantage to kind of like, you know, draw this whole thing out. Um, and of course he can get a trial quickly, he can just say, hey, you know, there's no reason we can't all do this on Zoom or something like that. Or there's no reason why we can't, you know, pick a location and basically ensure that it's uh, secure and have this case immediate. And of course, there's always an issue of money. Like, again, I don't know how much money he has, but I think he has to choose to spend his money wisely. I've done several videos of where I talked about R. Kelly's bankroll. I don't really know what it is, and I suspect many other people don't know what it is. But he has to make some decisions. He can choose right now to go and take his money and just drop it on the best 
known or the highest profile lawyers that are available, or he can choose to take that money and then he can go and basically just get several, he could get a few experienced lawyers and then he can get several inexperienced lawyers, right? So now the reason he would do something like this versus the latter is obvious. You would go and get that one high profile lawyer because they have a, a known history of winning and obviously they, they've been doing something to make them win and beyond the fact that their client may be get innocent or guilty, you know, they, they know how to play the game, right? And they have experience as a winner, right? You know, so yeah, I mean, it, it's a good strategy just to dump all your money on a lawyer like that and just let it ride. And then of course you have the other strategy where you could potentially just go ahead and get uh, a few experienced lawyers, but not necessarily you know, high profile lawyers, and then you can get a whole bunch of inexperienced lawyers. And the reason I would make a decision like that is because of the amount of works that needs to be done. And I would say in this case, there's a, a ton of work that needs to be done. Uh, you know, he has several cases uh, all over, right? He has several cases all over New York, Illinois, and also Minnesota. Although I hear the Minnesota case has been pretty much put on hold. But there's a lot of work to be done. And the advantage of having a huge team is that you can have different people filing different things and you can try to win with numbers, so to speak. So there you have it. The two basic strategies when it comes down to using the money that he has effectively, you can just uh, hire profile lawyers and just focus on one particular strategy or you can have, hire several lawyers and basically focus on winning by numbers, just winning by overwhelming your opponent. So all that being said, I think, you know, just getting back to the subject in hand, I think the appeal was just kind of a, a loser's move. I get it, I understand. Uh, being behind bars is not the best place to be. And it as well also makes you look guilty, but I think you're, I think I think it does two things. I think there's going to be a psychological effect on R. Kelly by constantly applying for bail and losing, and I also think that it just kind of you know stresses stressed him out, so to speak, right? Uh, you know because he's he's constantly running back and forth to court. Perception, time, and money. I don't think constantly filing motions, filing appeals for bails was the best move because essentially it was a waste. And I think the thing to get out of all that from this entire experience, the one thing that R. Kelly can take away is that he can now be more conscious. If he successfully manages these elements wisely, perception, time, and money, he's more than likely to win the case. And again, this case is not over. It's still anyone's case to win. R. Kelly can still win it. But I think managing perception, time, and money is going to be key. Uh, in terms of perception, I think the best thing R. Kelly can do is just go ahead and file some winning motions. And they don't have to be big wins. They don't have to be huge wins. The little wins lead up to the big wins. To basically get the the winning perception out there and then he can start posting on Twitter, you know, hey, I just won this this motion. Hey, I just won that motion. Hey, I just won this motion. He needs to file motions that, number one, he can easily win and then number two, that's going to be incredibly difficult for the government to protect against. And they don't have to be relevant motions. They don't have to be big motions. He just needs winning motions at this point. Think of it like uh, the jab in boxing. The jab, if nothing else, like people can't get knocked out with a jab. You know, I, I, I haven't seen it happen in a long time, but I imagine it can happen. What the jab does, though, is that it wears you down. You're constantly being jabbed in the nose over and over and over. And then eventually that nose gets tender and you just can't take it anymore. Right. Or at the least, the jab becomes such a distraction and then you're able to get in the hook or the cross, so on and so forth. So all I'm trying to say 
is that perception is key here. And then with his time, he just has to be conscious of his time. What motions are going to give me the best are going to do better are, are going to be more efficient use of time right um, if it's a winning motion even though it's it's not a huge win is not that really relevant is not not that much relevant but it's going to give me a win me personally I would say that's a really good use of my time um, the bell motions the constant like the first two like the first motion for bell Okay, they deny that, then I do a motion to reconsider. Okay, they deny that. And then I go over to Illinois and I file a motion for bail. They deny that. And then I go back over to New York and I appeal the bail. They deny that. And then I come back over to Chicago and apply for the bail. They, you, you see what I'm saying? It's just too much, too many losses. And it, it's really not a good investment of time, especially when you're going back and forth to different states and things of that nature. So it's, it's just too much. So I would say these are some of the things that he has to consider. If he files a motion and he loses and he loses badly, he has to consider uh, whether or not it's going to be a waste of time to file a motion to reconsider and run back and forth and file that same, essentially the same motion in another state. It's not going to be the best use of time. Now, remember, they they designed this thing to essentially break R. Kelly. That's why they have him fighting three different, four different cases, essentially. The Minnesota case, even though it's on pause, is still hanging in the background, and they can activate that case whenever they see fit. And when I say they, I mean the government. Don't think that the state and federal government aren't coordinating, right? Um so they designed this thing to basically break him. It's it's a game whereby they're, it's a strategy whereby they're trying to make sure he loses. He's fighting a case in the state and he's fighting a case in the uh, Illinois Fed, federal court. And he's also fighting a case in New York federal court. This is a gauntlet. They set up this gauntlet and they, they've designed it to break R. Kelly. So because of it, he has to really consider where he wants to put his time in to give him the best uh, result. And then, of course, money is going to have the same effect. You're paying for a guy to be in New York. You're paying for a guy to be in Chicago, so on and so forth. And you don't necessarily want to spend money having people run back and forth, so on and so forth. And now, and I, as I understand it, he has attorneys in New York, and he also has attorneys in Illinois or Chicago, and these attorneys may or may not be licensed to practice law in the opposite states, but that's all irrelevant. You really just, I, I think he really has to be careful and only focus on motions that are going to win because motions that aren't going to win are going to be a waste of money. So, you know, that's it, you know. So, again, just to recap, perception, time, and money. These are the seeds of benefit that he got from losing his motions and appeal on bail. He now is in a place where he should realize that these are elements that he has to pay attention to. That's it for this video. Go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Am I on point? Am I off? Am I just crazy talking out of the side of my head? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.